I recently read in The Guardian that climate change will destroy capitalism. Interesting twist, because a lot of climate activists seem to think that destroying capitalism is the way to go. So maybe they should now actually support climate change. I'm only half joking, and that's still 50% more serious than the US government. But let's have a look at what this is about. The Guardian article reports on a piece written by Günther Tallinger from the major insurance company Allianz. Tallinger warns that climate change makes home insurance increasingly costly and that eventually insurers can no longer offer coverage or people can no longer pay it. This, Tallinger says, is a bigger deal than it sounds because this is a systemic risk that threatens the very foundation of the financial sector. If insurance is no longer available, other financial services become unavailable too. A house that cannot be insured cannot be mortgaged. No bank will issue loans for uninsurable property. Credit markets freeze. This is a climate-induced credit crunch. This applies not only to housing but to infrastructure, transportation, agriculture and industry. The economic value of entire regions, coastal, arid, wildfire-prone, will begin to vanish from financial ledgers. Markets will reprice rapidly and brutally. This is what a climate driven market failure looks like. He isn't the only one to worry. In January 2025, the Financial Stability Board warned that climate-related vulnerabilities in the financial system when triggered by climate shocks could threaten financial stability through various transmission channels and amplification mechanisms, and that if the climate shock is sufficiently material, these risk channels could affect the solvency of a wide variety of financial institutions, sectors and geographies in a highly correlated manner leading to systemic risks. This isn't blind alarmism. These people really should know. After all, it's literally their job to quantify future risks and those risks are about to explode. Insurances are the canary in the coal mine of climate change and that mine is on fire underwater and no longer insurable. In the United States, the Senate's budget committee published a report on home insurance just in December. They found that between 2018 and 2023, the share of people who didn't renew their home insurance increased by more than 200% in Florida, Louisiana and Hawaii, presumably because insurance became unaffordable or unavailable. The report warns that insurance is essential to obtaining a mortgage, so as insurances become less available, more and more affected properties will become unmortgageable. And as more and more properties become unmortgageable, property values in affected markets will decline as most buyers need a mortgage. Australia and New Zealand too are facing what experts are calling a home insurance crisis. The Australian Climate Council has warned that by 2030 about 1 in 25 homes will be uninsurable. The situation in Europe is slightly better in so far that we get neither hurricanes nor cyclones, just floods, droughts and heat waves. But the European Environment Agency says that the economic losses from these extreme weather events have increased by almost 3% a year from 2009 to 2023. Economists are warning of an insurance protection gap. That's the difference between insured and uninsured losses from climate related catastrophes. The European Insurance and Occupational Pensions Authority estimates this gap to be around 75%. This isn't just a gap, that's missing a flaw. These were a lot of numbers, but I think you'll get the picture. It doesn't matter whether people believe that climate change is real, it's causing real economic damage. Once the damage is done, someone has to fix it. The costs for that are getting so high that there isn't enough money in the private sector to finance it through insurance. Hence, insurance companies say governments need to pick up part of the bill, thus the talk about the failure of capitalism. So I'm afraid that no, this isn't alarmism. This is the reality that we live in. I'm only half joking when I say that some climate activists 
scientists might now actually support climate change because a substantial fraction of them seem to think that capitalism is the source of all evil. Tough luck, I guess you can't have it all. That said, on the worry meter, I give this a 7 out of 10. On the one hand, economic stress is a real problem because it's going to make all of our lives worse. On the other hand, it probably won't kill all that many people. But hey, at least we're finally seeing the invisible hand of the market waving a white flag. If you've ever looked at the state of the world and felt more than just a little despair, yeah, I've been there too. The world is big and I'm small and what can I possibly do? Well, one thing I can do that makes a real difference is to support Planet Wild. Planet Wild is a community-powered nature protection group that takes real action every single month, restoring ecosystems, protecting wildlife and backing local solutions around the world. I joined two years ago and honestly, it's been one of the best decisions I've made. Here's a recent example. Their 24th mission was in Madagascar, the only place on Earth where wild lemurs live. But 80% of Madagascar's forests have already been lost to deforestation and if nothing changes, there might be nothing left by 2050. Planet Wild is stepping in, partnering with local communities to stop the destruction and bring life back to these forests. And I love how transparent they are. You're not just tossing money into a void, you see where every cent goes. They document every mission with videos on YouTube and updates in their app, so you're part of the journey from day one. We're almost 12,000 members by now. If that made you curious, I've got a gift for you. I'm covering your first month if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up using my link or QR code. No strings attached. You can cancel any time, but I have a feeling you'll want to stick around. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.